On one particularly bright day in the summer of 1950 at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, four scientists were indulged in a casual conversation about flying saucers during lunch. They were Emil Konopinski, Edward Teller, Hebert York, and Enrico Fermi. What began as a superficial conversation about a flying saucer cartoon quickly turned into a discussion about the possibility of sophisticated societies populating the universe. During the discussion, Enrico Fermi came out with this casual remark, Where is everybody? This might come across as a simple existential question, but this remark left scientists around the world scratching their heads even to this date. The root of the question according to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is that Fermi realized that any civilization with a modest amount of rocket technology and an immodest amount of imperial incentive could rapidly colonize the entire galaxy. Within 10 million years, every star system could be brought under the wing of an empire. 10 million years may sound long, but in fact, it's quite short compared with the age of the galaxy, which is roughly 10,000 million years. Colonization of the Milky Way should be a quick exercise. According to the scientific logic, the universe should be teeming with extraterrestrial lives and colonies. Whatever you see in the Guardians of the Galaxy or the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy should have been the reality. Yet all we see within the observable universe is the magnificent emptiness. Sure, there might be bacterial lives floating in the oceans of a distant planet, but where are all the civilizations? Where are all the sentient beings? Are we truly alone in this universe? Have you ever slept in an open field far away from the city and looked at the clear night sky filled with stars? I have and the sheer number of stars and objects I see never fails to give me a tiny existential crisis. It is extremely overwhelming. But on the very best of nights, we could only see up to 2500 stars and almost all of them are less than 1000 light years away from us. When we look up at the night sky, what we are really seeing is this. Recently, the astronomers at the University of Auckland claimed that there are actually around 100 billion habitable Earth-like planets just in the Milky Way, our galaxy. There are roughly around 500 billion galaxies in the universe, meaning there is somewhere around 5 times 10 to the power of 22 habitable planets in total. Forget the whole universe, even if we take just our galaxy and apply some math on the lowest estimate for the stars in the Milky Way, we would still estimate that there are 1 billion Earth-like planets and 100,000 possible intelligent civilizations just in our galaxy. Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence or SETI is an organization dedicated to listening for signals from other intelligent life. Even if a fraction of those estimated 100,000 civilizations are sending out signals, shouldn't SETI pick up on any of those signals? We have nothing so far. Now Fermi's casual remark is beginning to make complete sense. We are one among 5 times 10 to the power of 22 habitable planets. So naturally, why is it so silent? Where is everybody? And that is Fermi paradox. And even the best of humanity are still trying to come up with a reasonable response. Several scientists have come up with various arguments, theories and calculations while addressing this question. In 1961, Dr. Frank Drake wrote an equation that would, in theory, allow us to quantify the number of intelligent civilizations out there. It is called the Drake Equation. The equation summarizes the main concepts which scientists must contemplate when considering the question of other radio communicative life forms. This is how the Drake Equation looks like. Here, N denotes the number of intelligent civilizations that could come in contact with us. R stands for the average rate of star formations in our galaxy. F stands for the fraction of formed stars that have planets. And E stands for the stars that have planets where the average number of planets that can potentially support life. F1 stands for the fraction of those planets that actually develop life. If I stands for the fraction of planets bearing life on which intelligent civilized life has developed. FC stands for the fraction of these civilizations that have developed communications, that is, technologies that release detectable signals into space. And finally, 
L stands for the length of time over which such civilizations release detectable signals. If you manage to fill the appropriate values for all the components forming this equation, you can in theory calculate the number of intelligent species with which we can come in contact. We cannot accurately calculate, at least not yet, most of Drake equation's components. So we resort to assumptions based on our own observations, usually based on the lowest estimates. This is the biggest criticism on Drake equation. It is unreliable and you can't come to a firm conclusion. But in all fairness, Dr. Frank Drake wrote this equation mainly to stimulate a mathematical dialogue on this topic. But one thing that Drake equation proves is that, no matter how low the estimate is, it is highly improbable that we are the only intelligent species that exist in the whole universe. After all, the possibilities of a hundred thousand civilizations, the observable universe is still eerily quiet. No detection, no contact, no extraterrestrials. Why? There are many possible theories and speculations that respond to this question and we will take a look at them one by one. Reason number one. We are in a remote part of the universe. Even though alien intelligent civilization exists, we might simply be too far away from where the action is. We might be in a remote part of the universe several billion light years away from even the closest of civilizations. Reason number two, the great filter theory. According to this theory, every intelligent civilization will hit a block called the great filter. It can be anything from tsunami, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, or even something that we caused such as nuclear war that would send us right back to the stone age or even wipe us out completely. Technology would never evolve in order for us to communicate to the farthest parts of our galaxy. This theory does seem closer to the truth as we consume more and more energy from our planet, but we don't yet know what to do with the resulting heat. Temperatures are rising tremendously, which would lead to a catastrophic situation. There are still climate change deniers. We are still fighting religious wars and territorial battles, which would lead to the inevitable apocalypse. There might be several civilizations like us who tried their best to communicate with each other, but never proceeded past the great filter and died off, not knowing if they are truly alone. Reason number three. Earth is just not interesting. While there might be a lot of intelligent species that are capable of intergalactic flights and communications, there might also be lands that are vastly more interesting than Earth. This hits the ego with a hammer, but still, for these intelligent beings, Earth and its species might look like a wasted hubris. Especially if they've seen a number of such up-and-coming civilizations in different parts of the universe, it might not be interesting after a point. Reason number four, the transcension hypothesis. This is probably the weirdest response to the Fermi paradox. You know how humanity is all about world building, expansion and exploration, right? We send satellites to explore oceans of strange planets. We try to live on Mars and expansion, expansion and more expansion. Well, the transcension hypothesis states that all the expansion would come to a screeching halt and instead of exploring the outer space, we would explore the inner space after a certain point. For example, you probably know that computers were the size of a room just a few decades ago. But now, you're probably watching this video on a smartphone that fit your palm. Similarly, as the transhumanist movement expands, the merge of humanity and technology will become inevitable, as organizations like 2045 Initiative are focused on tracing the brain patterns and uploading human consciousness onto an artificial carrier. When we get past the technological singularity, we would no longer have our biological bodies to limit us. Then intelligent life would begin to evolve much the same way as computers, constantly working towards a denser, more efficient use of space, time, energy and matter. This is called STEM compression. Eventually, we will be living and operating on a nanoscale until we become so small that we create and exist in a black hole outside of this space-time, essentially disappearing from this universe altogether. 
According to transcension hypothesis, that's why we aren't coming into contact with any intelligent species because stem compression and black holes are the ultimate destination for any super intelligent species. They even allow for time travel and energy harvesting methods. Reason number five, we are living in a simulation. The simulation hypothesis states that we may be living in a computer simulation designed by supercomputers of the future. I have discussed the simulation hypothesis in great detail in one of my earlier videos where I discuss why we may be living in a computer simulation. If you had watched The Matrix, 13th Floor or The Truman Show, you might have some idea of what I'm talking about. Simulation theory is a reasonable response as to why we haven't come into contact with alien beings. The answer is simply, that's not how the simulation is designed. Reason number six, our signals don't match. As Carl Sagan put it, we are still in the technological adolescence. Imagine we are sending radio signals out there while all these super intelligent species operate on a completely different and a more advanced form of communication, which essentially leaves us undetected. On the same note, maybe there are plenty of signals servicing as an evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence but we are too primitive to detect them as signals. Astrophysicist Lord Rees once said, they could be staring us in the face and we just don't recognize them. The problem is that we are looking for something very much like us, assuming that they at least have something like the same mathematics and technology. I suspect there could be life and intelligence out there in forms we can't even conceive. Reason number seven, Earth is indeed special. This is straightforward, simple, but an entirely plausible theory that suggests that the conditions on which this planet was created were so unique and complex, it is almost impossible for it to be recreated elsewhere. Even though there are millions of Earth-like planets, they may be empty because the condition to create life is simply too complicated and life is special to us. On the same vein, there is another theory that suggests that we might be too early to the party and we may be the first intelligent beings to experience this universe. Intelligent civilizations would thrive well into the future, but we probably wouldn't be there to experience the show. Reason number eight, super predator theory. This is probably the darkest response for Fermi paradox. This theory states that there is only one higher intelligent species out there. It is a super predator which silently observes the universe for life forms and if any civilization grows past a certain point, the super predator exterminates them as the growing civilization is a legitimate threat. According to this theory, that's probably why it is so eerily quiet out there because we are constantly being watched by this omnipresent menacing predatory species that's waiting for us to evolve just a little more. When you talk about Fermi Paradox, you also have to discuss a lot of sub-theories and ideas that's associated with it that I didn't discuss in this video. Ideas such as Kardashev scale, Matryoshka brain, and Dyson sphere. So I decided to produce two more videos on this topic, sort of a companion piece for this video. Alright, now, what do you think? Are we alone in this universe? If not, why do you think we haven't come in contact with any alien species? Do you have reasons other than what I've discussed in this video? If yes, please leave a comment below with your unique theory. If you like this video, please leave a like, share this with your friends on social media, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to turn the notification on. Also, I am extremely happy to announce that our channel hit the 1000 subscribers mark last week. So thank you for watching and supporting. This series Journal of Things is also now listed on IMDB where you can rate and review the series while also learn more about all the previous episodes. Thank you for watching and see you soon.